factory wiring up and out of the way for right now. size we use for our screws and nut certs we use what are called m5s we also use m6 for our bigger ones all right as far as mounting goes that's all set for grounding over here on this side there are two factory ground points that we can use and Fernando did another stellar job on mounting the fuse holder in place. The wires are ran through the grommet behind here. Amplifier is mounted. The ground is in place. I can get this bracket back on, and where that leaves me is wiring up the crossovers. You know, as much as we use Tessa tape and all that, I still, uh, it's so sticky. And this is 15 year old Tessa tape, so this stuff is super gooey. Ugh. And it leaves the wires all gooey. When we can, we use the braided loom. It doesn't have that problem. It is a tad bit more expensive. And don't get me wrong, we still use Tessa tape where it's gonna be someplace that, you know, we don't have to deal with all that much, but we've also switched to using the exterior, which still gets sticky. It doesn't get sticky as fast. We know all our speaker wires are here except for the tweeters. What I want to do is cut off the ones that we need, and I know I have to cut them off. There is a company that does make a plug for this. However, it's not one that we stock or have gotten in the past. We've had customers bring it in. And I don't like cutting the harness. However, we'll make sure when we do cut the harness that we leave a good two to three inches. If and when the time comes that he needs to put the factory back in, we can easily solder this harness back together without it being a problem for us or the next guy. To figure out what speaker is which and what wire is which is we're gonna use a PT9A polarity tester. It puts out a popping signal into our speaker lines and then we have a portable microphone version of it. And this is gonna tell us which one of these wires is positive or negative. Now that we have the speakers in, we can do that because this will be the final connection. If we get it wrong from here, that's my bad. Which one is that, passenger? What do you have? Positive. It's positive? What's that? How this is wired up, there's a fat gray and a skinny gray. That's the driver's door. There's a fat red and a skinny red, and that is the passenger door. The rest of the wires are for the rear channels and the center channel. Once the wires are cut, re-tape back up the factory harness. The reason why we do that is so that it just doesn't look like a random garbage harness in the car or that something was manhandled in any way. It retains a factory look and appearance. It'll be zip tied out of place. It won't scare a mechanic or something like that that gets into the car and has to work on the vehicle if they just see some big plug with a bunch of wires cut on it. They're naturally going to think the end of the world has happened. We try to make it as easy for those guys as possible. After we get that done, we apply more tape to our wires that are gonna come up to these crossovers. Because of where I wanted to cut these to ensure that I could still reassemble the factory plug. Two of these wires are gonna be short to get over here, so we will be lengthening them to go to our crossover. But the other two will reach, so we'll connect those two first. The crossovers are all finished up. The amplifier is there. The next step is to get all this put back together and then hop in with Fernando and finish putting the radio in the dash. Of course, to put this all back together, it just goes in reverse order. The one thing that I'm gonna have to do is there's a solid piece of plastic that goes right here. 
It's this piece right here. I will have to put a U-cut in it to clear that new wiring right there. But other than that, this will all just go back together the way it was previous. And this is what it looks like, totally sealed up. No one will ever suspect that there's really cool speakers in here, except unless they go, look at those pretty Focal crossovers. Shutting the hoods on the Porsches. Don't slam the hood. The logo, put your thumb here and gently press so you hear the click. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Ferrari, same way. Let's take a look at the radio we're going to be installing. Put that instruction manual back in. This is it here. This is a Mechalus radio or a CD, DVD list, whatever you want to call it. We have a seven inch. On the back side, we have five volt, six channel preamp out. We have backup camera. We have front camera options. We have a video out. We have a video in. We have an audio in. The reverse trigger is also located on here as well as the emergency brake. It has one USB for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a standard antenna, and it is iData Link compatible. The dash kit we're going to be using is the best kits BKPOR911S. In the kit, of course, is the instructions explaining how to get the dash off part. Comes with a pocket, so if you're gonna be doing any form of single DIN mount or possibly a floating radio, you can use this. The left and right mounting bracket for the radio. This piece right here is for the pocket. We're not gonna be needing it, so you break them off. I also recommend sanding them flat. Inside the bag is the color match dash kit. This one just happens to be silver. Always give it a once over, make sure that there's no scratches or anything like that. On the kit, it says right and left. They just snap them into the side like so. Grab your radio, push it into place. In the bag for the kit, it came with the machine thread V-cut screws. Those are the kind that are gonna flush up against here. They will work perfectly for this radio because the Kenwoods take those type screws. This radio has no motorization, so just line it up and screw it in place. Because it is a short chassis, there aren't gonna be any screws back here. I just add all four screws to the short side. Gets it in there nice and secure. Don't over tighten these because they'll pull through the plastic. They just need to be on there tight enough so that the radio won't move. Check your dash kit just to make sure that the radio is level. And this is it, you're done. You can set it aside. The harness we're gonna use is the BHA 1784. And we're only using this because, well, it'll plug in, but we're not using it as an actual harness in that these wires are what are in the car. And I know that sounds a little confusing, but there is no accessory and this has an accessory, so that wire is gonna come out. There's no illumination in here either, so that wire is coming out. And the constant 12 volts is in the wrong place. So that's gonna come out and get relocated. It goes ground, skip, constant 12 volts. The other thing we wanna do is on the speaker side, remove the center wires here, which are the front speakers. We're not gonna need those for anything. And we're gonna be using the rears from the radio. What we have on this harness is rear speakers, constant and ground, and that's it. That's all we're gonna get. This is gonna plug into the car. We've gone ahead and already ran the accessory, which I'll show you, and the illumination, which I'll show you that as well. So here's what the fuse panel looks like. We've found the accessory fuse. It's located all the way over here on the outside. We've used our double fuse tap and we've labeled it accessory. So it's covered in some braided loom. It snakes out through the fuse box here on the top so that the cover goes over it flatly. If you're using a fuse tap like this, make sure you use it properly. This end here has to be where the power source is in the fuse. If the power source was here, this wire would have to come out the bottom. The power source is here, so the wire comes out of the top. What that allows for is the power will come in here, pass across the fuse, and then out to our device. If the power source was on this side, it would not pass through this fuse. It would immediately just come out to our device and the circuit would not be fused. So be very careful of that. You can test for that, of course, with a digital multimeter, putting your positive test lead into each terminal with the other one to ground, set to DC, see which one has your power source on it. The panel in the bottom, Snap it in the top, all good. Now when you're running your accessory wire over in this, stop once you get it up through the top and run your microphone wire across and then run them both over at the same time. It'll save you some time. You can also use the same loom for both. In case you're wondering where the microphone is, 
it's mounted up here. That way when you close the visor down, you can still talk through to the microphone. You have to be careful of that when putting a microphone in the headliner. On our Kenwood harness, we're gonna be using those same colors we just talked about. In addition to the orange white is illumination and the red accessory. Wires we'll not be using is the blue with the yellow stripe and the brown. That's steering wheel controls and mute. We don't need either one of those. We're not gonna be using our white pair and our gray pair, those are the front speakers. We're going to cap off the ones we are not gonna be using and put them in their own little pigtail off to the side here. Three wires that we've ran in the car will be the remote turn on, the accessory as we said, and the illumination. I want to lengthen them. That's that pigtail there. What's left on the harness are these wires here. You just need to solder those on. Our harness is all set. We have the three wires we talked about, the plug, the factory plug, the radio's plug, the antenna adapter. This is all set and ready to get into the car. Obviously we don't just want the USB hanging out looking all crappy. This is that passenger side panel in the back that had the one big screw in it, the one big Torx. Cigarette lighter was there. This just on screws. It's actually one of the easiest ones to get out, which is kind of nice. What we're gonna put in place of it is the USB AUX3. It goes on very similar in that it screws in. It has this little door that goes over it. We're gonna pull that off and we'll put his old cigarette lighter and that cover in the bag and give it to him. Just feed it through the hole, screw it in place. And there you go. Now we have an aux and a USB mounted flush in the same location. Can't even see it. Run this up behind the radio. Make sure you leave some slack down by the end so that you can remove this and set it to the side. This will plug up into the aux and the USB at the radio. Fernando has all the wiring taken care of, labeled everything. So we have illumination, we have accessory, and of course we have a blue remote turn on. I went ahead and snaked in the USB aux cable into the dash here. He soldered on our RCA connectors onto the back. This is all set and ready to go. We can now set the radio in place, turn everything on and make sure it works. Don't push it all the way in before you're ready to go on this one because it is it's a tad bit challenging to get out. It doesn't use those four turny twist things on the side here. What it does use are four clips here and here and these are in the same location as those. So just like when we had to push those in on the driver's side, you kind of have to do the same thing here, but it's a lot harder. It's way harder. Start with your longest cables first and plug those in and then work into the shorter cables. Working with a Kenwood, remember, the front RCA is not the top RCA, it's the middle RCA. It's time to power it up. And down. Because we're using the radio's factory power to power the rear speakers, we're gonna be turning them down some, and also we have to make sure we use the crossover from here on those. Now that we know that all the speakers are functioning, we did a quick front and rear fader. We need to set up the gains on the amplifier. To do that, remember that disc that was in the box? Well, this obviously doesn't have a disc. I store all mine on my phone via Dropbox. Now on this Kenwood, we know that we can go zero dB, turn the volume all the way up, get no distortion on the inputs of the amplifier. So we get no clip. This is what we're looking at right here. So as we turn up the gain, We're starting to get blinky lights. We want blue. We're at negative five dB. We figure that'll give them enough headroom for this. And that's it as far as setting that goes. This is a aftermarket radio. When setting that with an aftermarket radio, make sure all your bass, mid, and treble, and all that is set to flat. We've also faded all the way to the front, disabling the rear speakers so that they don't make any noise because playing this test track through speakers will blow them and be bad. Now we can play music and get our balance correct between front and rear. One other step, unplug the speaker outputs from the amplifier before you do this test. And then of course, don't forget to plug them back in when you're done.
Now, a lot of you guys ask, you know, I was thinking about using deck power and should I do it? And my answer is always the same, no. And the reason for that is that the amplifier on board will always clip out long before the preamp section. Now how we compensate for that in this case is turn them down. We can go into the crossover setting of this and there's a negative level control, which allows us to turn that down, which means that the signal feeding that factory amplifier is turned down, which means where it's gonna clip and distort is much later, so we've moved that farther out, which means we can actually use this amp on here because we essentially have a gain control for it. If they're still too loud, we can further use the balance and fader to turn those down as well. These are still factory small speakers. We don't want them to do really anything other than just if he turns his head, the sound just doesn't disappear. With the audio testing done, we can move on to the rest of the tests we need to do. What's the weather like today? It's currently when testing Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, what you're really testing for is the microphone to make sure that it's functioning properly. We always ask what the weather is because it's just the easiest thing to do. The last and final step is to snap it all together and just take a look at it, make sure the fit and finish is the way we want it. So as we're getting ready to push this in, we noticed something that just wasn't standing out to us. It doesn't always do that. This here is different color than this. But this matches the color that's on the steering wheel. We've never ran into an issue where these haven't matched and they've been this far apart. So I've called the customer and this is the silver that Best Kits makes for theirs, but they also make a black, which everything in the car is black and silver. It's just not this silver. So I proposed we go with the black kit, matches the radio, matches the vinyl, matches the leather. And he's like, yeah, let's do that. We'll see how it looks. There are a few companies that do make kits with this high gloss silver. And if he decides that, you know, the black isn't working for him, then we'll get one of those in. We're back in black. All right, guys. That's the Porsche. Fernando, yes. end the show. All right, guys, on to the next one. Thank you for watching as always. You guys have a wonderful night. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.